switch gears. Want to actually go ahead and get into a little bit of college football. Now, we haven't done a lot of college football over the last couple of weeks, and it's because, bluntly, there ain't all that much to talk about. It's an interestingly slow time of year in college football. One of the rare, really slow times on the calendar. We have a couple weeks in maybe May and June after the spring semester ends, before kids return for summer school. And we have a few weeks in February before spring ball really ramps up. That's really essentially the only time that college football takes a back seat uh, in the world of sports. Well, I bring it up because while the bad news is there isn't that much to talk about, The good news is, with the free time, the rare free time that these college football coaches have, a lot of them are actually doing interviews, doing media, kind of catching up with the local guys, the national guys, whatever. Seen a bunch of interviews with Dan Lanning, seen a couple interviews with uh, Lincoln Riley. And earlier this week, I saw that Kalen DeBoer, the new coach at Alabama, was actually doing a couple interviews with local people down in Alabama. Went on with Greg McElroy and Cole Kublik. I love those guys. I've been on with those guys on jocks. And also on top of that, Kalen DeBoer went on with my buddy Ryan Fowler on Tide 100.9. I go on with Ryan every single week. I'm here to say I am not 1,000th as important as uh, Kalen DeBoer, who did his first interview in Tuscaloosa with Ryan earlier this week. But I do want to react quickly to some stuff that Kalen DeBoer said. Uh, You can see the whole interview, listen to the whole interview on Tide100.9.com. But I saw two or three things that Kalen DeBoer said that really kind of caught my eye that I just want to talk about. Because one, the the things that he said largely confirmed everything that I've been telling you since the day he got hired. But two, it also makes me feel good and fired up if I was an Alabama fan that, hey, there is no replacing the GOAT Nick Saban. But darn it, we did about as well as we possibly could. So I'm going to read you three different quotes, and then I'm going to tell you why I think each individually is important. The first one, Kalen DeBoer was asked about his offense, right? Always a topic of conversation. He comes in, and it has certainly been a topic of conversation because the maestro, the man that called the plays last year at Washington, Ryan Grubb, did not really follow Kalen DeBoer to Alabama. He's with the Seattle Seahawks now. Now, technically, he did follow him to Alabama because he did that one me, uh, media, you know, whatever it was, a booster event where he said, I'm your Alabama offensive coordinator, then he bounced. So technically, I guess he did follow Kalen DeBoer to Alabama for like two days, but he left. And so Ryan kind of asked Kalen DeBoer about the offense and, and, and how it's running all that. Kalen DeBoer kind of gave a pretty technical answer, so I'm not going to read all of it, but here were two things that stood out. He said, I would consider the offense very multiple. I think year in and year out, it might look the same, especially if the personnel is the same, but it can be adjusted very easily to whoever our quarterback is, whatever our strengths are, receivers, tight ends, running backs, et cetera. He continued, there are a lot of moving parts, a lot of things that hopefully will really challenge eye discipline to a defense and things that are simple to us because it's it's in a concept family so we can go from week to week and make it look a lot different for our opponent. And so... Why I want to react to that. So first of all, that to me is very important. Okay, let me explain why. It is because it largely confirms something I have been telling you about Kalen DeBoer since the second he got hired and certainly through all the controversy with Ryan Grubb. Is he staying? Is he going? Whatever. One, it's Kalen DeBoer's offense. But two, what I love about what I saw from Kalen DeBoer at Washington, and we've talked about it, but it's worth repeating. I don't think over the course of last college football season, that there was a team that I saw that did a better job of adjusting to their strengths and your weaknesses better than Washington and Kalen DeBoer's Washington football team did, right? So that sounded like the Washington football club, which is obviously the NFL team, whatever, the the Washington Huskies. I said it all year, but I said, look, This isn't the most talented team. I don't even think they were the most talented team in the Pac-12. I actually thought it was Oregon who they beat twice. But the one thing that I respected as an outsider, I'm not the X's and O's expert. I don't know why the tight end's going in motion here and what does it do to the safety there. That's not what I'm about. That's never what I've been about. But one thing I said about Kalen DeBoer, you could just see that he goes into each individual game. This is kind of an NFL model. And rather than saying, this is what we do, this is who we are, blah, 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 blah. No, 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 no. What do you do well? And how do we make sure to avoid, you know, playing into your strengths, but then also 
what do you not do well? What can we exploit and we can have success with? I keep going back, and I've used this as an example a million times. If you've heard me say it, I apologize. That college football playoff game against Texas. For four weeks, by the way, I picked I picked Washington to win in cover. I picked them to win outright when everybody else was taking Texas. But all week, uh, for four weeks, all we heard about Texas, oh, they're too big up front. They're too physical up front. What are you possibly going to do? And why did I pick Washington? It was because I heard the same thing the week before when they played Oregon in the Pac-12 championship game. I said, I don't really care about what Texas does well. Texas, oh, they're great up front. There's no way Washington's going to be able to block them. It's going to be impossible. But weren't we saying the same thing about Oregon a week before? And Kalen DeBoer put together a game plan that exploited Texas. Their weakness was the secondary. They were not good there. And the offensive line, to their credit, did a good job of protecting Michael Penix. Pe Michael Penix made some incredible throws in that game. But it was a combination of Michael Penix being awesome, but also a game plan where when they knew they couldn't run the ball, what did they do? Short little passes to Dylan Johnson, the, the, the running back, to make sure that um to make sure that they were able to move the ball on the ground, even if it wasn't in the traditional sense. They knew they weren't gonna line up and run the ball 35 times for 280 yards or whatever. And basically, by the way, that was essentially what they did against uh, USC earlier in the year. They knew that USC could not stop the run and they ran the ball for like 300 yards in that game. But then you get to a college football playoff game. You know that Texas has dudes up front, dudes on dudes on dudes up front. And so what do you do? Michael Penix, 38 pass attempts. Dylan Johnson, only he rushed, how about this, 21 times for 49 yards. But Dylan Johnson, while he only averaged 2.3 yards per carry, you know what else he did? He had three catches out of the backfield. So I'm just I'm going on and on. But the point I'm trying to make is this was one thing I always appreciated about Kalen DeBoer, and he confirmed it with Ryan, with Ryan Fowler. Let me take it a step further. He also talked about Ryan Williams. Now, for people who have forgotten, you're kind of in that college basketball mode. Remember, Ryan Williams was the five-star wide receiver was part of the 2025 class, then he reclassified to 2024, then he committed to Bama, then when Nick Saban left, he decommitted, and then he recommitted to Kalen DeBoer, what, about a, two or three days before that national signing day on Wednesday, maybe a week before? Well, I bring it up because I thought this was interesting. He uh, Kalen DeBoer was asked about Ryan, uh, Ryan Williams. He said he's one of the most dynamic guys I've ever seen. Get the ball in his hands. He can do it on short routes, and he can do it deep downfield. And that was part of a bigger answer. I'm not going to read every word, but I bring it up. Another thing about Kalen DeBoer. Wasn't he the guy that wasn't going to be able to recruit in the SEC? And in literally three weeks, he convinced Ryan Williams in an NIL era. Remember, Ryan Williams' dad played at Auburn. So if there was ever a time that you're going to flip, maybe you don't go, go to Auburn, go play for Hugh Freeze. Hugh Freeze, we can criticize Hugh Freeze, but he has had a great track record of developing receivers. Go there, be a star. No, no, no. Kalen Bohr says, no, you're coming here and you're going to like it. And that's exactly what happened. And so he talked a lot about Ryan Williams, but also I just look at, yes, he's talking about the player, but I think it speaks to the coach that he was able to convince this guy to come play at Alabama. It would have been easy for this kid to say, you know what? I liked Alabama, but I want to play for Coach Saban. This isn't the right opportunity for me. Instead, he heard the pitch. He heard the sales pitch. He heard how he was going to be used, and he chose Alabama. And I'll just say this. Again, not your X's and O's expert. There's a lot of great podcasts and radio shows and whatever that are going to break down the X's and O's. That's not me. I just know this. Kalen DeBoer just coached three probably first to second round NFL wide receivers last year at Washington, including Roma Dunze, who most believe will probably be the second wide receiver off the board behind Marvin Harrison Jr., maybe the third wide receiver off the board with Malik Neighbors. We'll see. But I just bring it up because if this guy just coached three Sunday receivers at minimum, and he said Ryan Day is uh, Ryan, Ryan Williams, not Ryan Day, be kind of wild if Ryan Day was a, a, a an NFL wide receiver too, but Ryan Williams, he's one of the most explosive guys I've ever seen. Get the ball in his hands. I love that, too. Isn't that what a great play caller? Oh, everyone, oh, what about Ryan Grubb? What about Ryan Grubb? 
This is why you hire within, you retain, you develop people in your program. But Kalen DeBoer just told you what's going to happen. We're going to get that ball in that guy's hands, and we're going to let him cook to quote, you know, whatever, Russell Wilson. The last thing I saw Kalen DeBoer say, which I found to be very interesting, was about the expectations of being the Alabama football coach. How is he going to handle it? Oh, my goodness, he's taking over for the greatest who's ever done. I thought this was very interesting. He said, wherever you've been, whether you're a coordinator, and even going back to my days at Sioux Falls, you have that expectation of winning and winning championships. That's this program and what the expectations are here. And to me, this is maybe the single most impressive thing about Kalen DeBoer that I don't think I've given him enough credit for. Is that in life, you know, you can, one, you can be content. If you got a good thing going, nobody's going to blame you for sticking around, for staying put, for whatever. He just proved that he can win at a really high level at Washington a season ago. And he could have stayed there. And maybe in a year, if he was looking for something else, he'd always have on that resume, Pac-12 champion, 14-1, and lost in the title game. That's going to get you a job for another three or four years, as long as you don't completely fall apart. So he could have waited, seen if Michigan opened up, seen if Ohio State in a year opened up, whatever. But what I respect about Kalen DeBoer, there was one job in college football that we all deemed a great job, but also a darn near impossible job. And that was replacing the greatest guy to ever do it in this sport. Kalen DeBoer not only did not back down from that challenge, he ran to that challenge. And what did he just say? Everywhere we go, we expect to win championships. And he said, that is the expectation here. And so there's nothing else for me to say other than that. I love that not only does he have a track record, not only does he have the resume, he was as good as you could have realistically done, but that he pursued this job, that he wasn't afraid. He wasn't fearful. He wasn't the guy that was saying, well, man, Nick Saban just set the bar at an impossible standard. I can't match it. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to wait for something else. Maybe Ryan Day trips up, doesn't have a great year. He ends up going to the NFL. Maybe something weird happens, whatever. Lincoln Riley leaves in a year to go to the NFL. I'll go somewhere where the expectations are a little bit lower, where I can get get in at a little bit of a level below where I'm coming in right now. And Kalen DeBoer said, darn it, I'm going to do the exact opposite. I'm going to go where the expectations are impossible, where I am replacing the greatest to ever do it. Why? Because everywhere I've been, the expectation is championships. It's the same here, and I'm ready to get going. So, Kalen DeBoer, great week of media. Shout out to my buddy Ryan Fowler for locking that interview in. Also, shout out to Greg and Cole, who did a great job with Kalen DeBoer as well. I don't know what else to say, man. I love college hoops, but I also can't lie. I'm pretty fired up for football as well as we ramp back up here with spring practice. If you enjoyed this video, do me a quick favor. Make sure to subscribe to the Aaron Torres Pod YouTube channel. New videos, new clips going up every single day. A lot of college football, a lot of college basketball as well. Make sure you're subscribed.